What's up everyone, OJ here, welcome back to another video. We are talking today about Pokemon Legends Arceus and also the next gen Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Direct. We just got a bunch of Nintendo stuff to talk about because I was excited to talk about various different things in the world of Nintendo and what's happening based on some of the feedback that you guys have told me what you're interested in and of course what I'm interested in as well. But before we get into anything, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, click that notification bell to get our videos first. And we're starting off with Pokemon Legends Arceus. Is this game better than what you thought it would be? And look, I've been stating this from the beginning with Pokemon Legends Arceus, is that everybody would have a very different thought process with this game if the graphics look good. If the graphics were incredible, then people would be saying that this is going to be the most incredible game that they've ever played. It could have the exact same gameplay that you've seen, but graphics are the first thing that people see and judge the game and think if it's going to be good or high quality or not when it comes to the Pokemon company, at least. But of course, as many of you guys know, the game did leak. There are some spoilers out there. I'm not going to be going over any of those spoilers. And of course, I do not have the game yet at this point. I'll be playing my legit copy of the game this upcoming week or next week, depending on when you're watching this. I'll be playing my legitimate copy of the game. But I wanted to go over some of the previews with this and a lot of the stuff that I said that Pokemon Legends Arceus needs before the game leaked or before we knew anything about the game too much is coming true with it. So this is very good to hear. Some of the biggest things that we've talked about when it comes to Pokemon is the length of the game, is the difficulty of the game, is the innovation of the Pokemon franchise. And it seems like Pokemon Legends Arceus delivers on all of those fronts exactly like I said that it would do and what it needs to be a successful single player RPG experience. And if the Pokemon company or more like Game Freak, I should say, actually went into a single player RPG and doing things that way, they can make a really compelling single player experience or story based experience for fans out there to enjoy and not worry about the balance of multiplayer and how moves work in a multiplayer setting so i think that pokemon legends arcus definitely nails that now let's get into some of the japanese previews of the legit version of the game so far so shout outs to gaming bolt for the article here and they actually translated from some of the biggest japanese sites so they say on their site pokemon legends arcus receives high praise in japanese media previews it's a game experience like no other in the series and i have high hopes for it as a completely new form of pokemon game one preview does say so pokemon legends arcus is launching in less than a week's time and nintendo and the pokemon company have been drumming up the hype for the game and it's lead up to launch Recently, a bunch of Japanese publications via VGC published their hands-on impressions. After some time with the game and the reception coming out of those early looks at the action RPG is rather positive. Something that Nintendo has been emphasizing in most of its marketing for Pokemon Legends Arceus is that it's a completely new type of Pokemon adventure, which I've been talking about quite a bit, how this is going to be something very different and very new because it's not multiplayer. That completely changes what you can do in this game and how you can go about it. So that is just right there going to create a very different experience than what we've gotten before. And that's something that's been highlighted in the previews as well, with the Game Watch preview stating, quote, it's a game experience like no other in the series, and I have high hopes for it as a completely new form of Pokemon game, like we mentioned before. Now, Famitsu, which we usually report the sales numbers from them, they actually talked about it and got their hands on the game as well. Now, they've proclaimed something very similar to what Game Watch said, while also praising the open world in the game, the manner in which the Pokemon behave in the field, and how dynamic their behavior is, and how one particular boss fight was surprisingly challenging for a Pokemon game, which in particular is something series fans should be very happy about or should be happy about. I know I'm happy about that, but you have to have that in a single player Pokemon game. Now the Game Watch preview contains similar praises as well, as well as praise for the fact that you yourself can be attacked by wild Pokemon, which brings some tensions to the proceedings. Now I did want to take a little bit of time before we get to the last part of this with Pokemon Legends Arcus, and that's something that I saw on Twitter. There was a clip shared by the official Pokemon account or 
or one of the official Pokemon accounts, which showed some gameplay. And what they showed was that the Pokemon was out there in the open and it was being very aggressive. So when you throw your Pokeball at it, you weren't going to be able to catch it. It's going to automatically spawn a Pokemon battle in that sense since they're attacking you and you have to dodge out of the way. So once the Pokeball goes out and you're fighting against the Pokemon, you can still move around before the battle gets initiated. So you can still move around. I guess maybe you can even run away or whatever the case is before you start. Now, once you start the battle, you stand there and you give your attack or you give your command of what you want to do. But after you're done, and I didn't know this, you can actually move. You can move around after you're done, even after you pick that attack. So it creates a dynamicness that you've never been able to do in any type of mainline Pokemon game or just a Pokemon game in general. And the cool thing about it is that once you want to get right back to attacking, you can do just that. So you can move around, you can kind of see the atmosphere and everything. And as the other Pokemon attacks your Pokemon, you can be hit by those attacks. And remember, if you take too much damage, you'll black out and lose the battle. So that to me right there creates such a dynamic experience that's completely different for the Pokemon franchise. That's never happened before. We've gotten some spin-off action RPG Pokemon games, little stuff here and there, Pokemon Rumble, stuff that has really no part of a mainline Pokemon game or to the level of what this game is doing. So this is a first of its kind and it's great to see some of the other things talking about how like the open world is being praised and how the Pokemon react and the AI associated with that. These are all things that are going to create a really cool pokemon world to play and from what i've seen from the gameplay preview that they showed us that 13 minute preview it looks like the pokemon definitely are intelligent they're not out there just being dumb like they'll react differently and i love that about the game i love that about the game and when i do catch a pokemon or when i do catch something i don't have to worry about how i'm going to train it or raise it for the multiplayer i'm not going to have to worry about oh what type of nature is it so i can have these type of stats i just grab a Pokemon, I get it, and now I have that Pokemon. Now, those stats still might be there. They still might be something that's part of the game or whatever it is, but I love the fact that it is a dynamic experience within a single player setting and world tour. I don't have to worry about all of that other stuff. So to me, this creates a really cool Pokemon game that we have never gotten before. And I think that these previews are echoing that right there. And like I stated again, what I said and what the Pokemon company needs to do and what Game Freak needs to do with Pokemon Legends Arceus is exactly what they're doing here. Now, I did want to get to the last part of these previews. So a preview by 4Gamer has also praised the game for similar things while also highlighting the fact that the setting set hundreds of years in the past is really well done and establishes really well that this is how Pokemon and humans must have interacted with each other in the past and this is how Pokemon must have behaved out in the wild. It looks like that in particular is something the game is going to emphasize quite a bit. Now once again Pokemon Legends Arcus is dropping officially on January 28th. I know I'm going to be streaming the game. I want to share this experience with everyone else because this is just something that I've been excited for for weeks now, especially after that preview or that overview trailer that they dropped, this is the Pokemon game that I've wanted to play. One that emphasizes the single player, one that emphasizes the nature of the Pokemon and being able to catch and freely go about and do things in that. And what I like about the Legends line, almost like the Echoes line for Nintendo with Fire Emblem going back, but this one's a little bit different because it's not a remake of a past game. It's like a prequel to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl or Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, but it's like an origin story. It's a telling of it. So it's almost like a prequel, remake, retelling of something that we knew happened, but it shows you how it happened. And I love that about Pokemon Legends Arceus. And I think that this is going to be the start of a franchise for Nintendo. I've heard enough in terms of what some people are saying about the game to know that this is going to be a hit. And we're looking at the sales. We don't have any numbers, of course, because the game isn't officially out yet, but it's number one on Amazon so far. So people are going to be snapping this game up. Digital sales of the game on Amazon are all the way up in the top four or five, and the physical game is number one. So this is going to be a game that people are very excited about. I expect to see a lot of Nintendo Switch OLEDs and Pokemon Legends Arceus out there, and this is going to be the perfect game 
for a portable play or just anywhere that you want. But goodness gracious, from what I'm seeing from these previews and from the game, I think when you look at the graphics and stuff like that, yeah, it's not the best that it could be or anything like that, but it's not as bad as people were trying to make it out to be. Now that we're starting to see more of the game and what the Pokemon company and what Nintendo has shown, I think that it's going to fit, especially when you're playing the game portably. I think you're going to be fine with it. So it's going to be interesting, man. I am excited for the game. Obviously, I'm looking forward to it quite a bit, and I think that a lot of people are going to be happy with it once it does officially drop. So happy Pokemon Legends Arceus week coming up. And of course, I'll be having a giveaway for the game. I do want to talk about that just real quick. I'll be having a giveaway. Make sure you check out the link in the description. I have a link to my Twitter page. Follow me on Twitter. The details of the giveaway will be on Twitter. So make sure you follow me on there, but I will be giving away a copy of the game. So that should be a lot of fun as well. So what are your thoughts on Pokemon Legends Arceus right now at this point? Are you planning on picking up the game? Are you waiting for the reviews? How do you feel this game is going to shake out? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, moving into the next topic, let's discuss the Nintendo Switch 2, the next gen Nintendo Switch, what Nintendo is doing with this, because I think that I have a very good idea of what they're going to do, and that's the reason why I wanted to talk about it. So, Nintendo Switch 2, I had a really good discussion on my live stream recently. Make sure you check out my live stream six days out of the week. You guys just know what it is. Hit the notification bell to get notified when we go live. So yes, we had a really good discussion on what Nintendo's gonna do for it and the hybrid nature of the system. And I think that there's still some people who don't realize what a hybrid is or that Nintendo's going all in on the hybrid. So here's what we do know. Factually, Nintendo invested another $1 billion back into game development and research and what they're doing with their development, right? So Nintendo is investing heavily into what? It's not the current Nintendo Switch right now at this point. This generation is pretty much almost done. Nintendo is really looking out for what they're going to do next and having a smooth transition into the next generation and making sure that they have the games that they need to that next generation Switch takes off. So that's what that billion dollar investment is. It's for the next generation. Generation. Nintendo has already laid out what they're going to do this year for their games. I think they're going to have maybe one more year or so of some good games that come out, and then it's going to be cross-gen and next-gen games. And I think that Nintendo, for this upcoming system, is going to do something that they haven't done before at all when it comes down to it, and that is making that true custom-made hybrid. You have to remember, with the Nintendo Switch, that's the Tegra X1. Nintendo says it's a custom-made one, but it's a Tegra X1, right? With some certain functions built for gaming and what they do with the RAM and stuff like that. But this upcoming system is going to be a completely actual unique Switch. And what I mean by that is that they're not going to go off of what they just see on the market, which at the time, back in 2015 or so, when they're trying to figure out what they're going to use for this, was the Tegra X1. That was the super chip. That was the best mobile chip that they can get to put in into a hybrid platform to be able to get some home console quality games like a Doom or a Skyrim and stuff like that, but also be able to get that power on the go as well that won't eat up your battery in like three seconds. So I think that this time what they're gonna do is make a completely custom chip built off of, of course, an advanced chip from Nvidia, but it's gonna be far more customized than what we got before. They're really gonna go in there with Nvidia and make sure that this thing performs way better than what you thought it would be. You're not gonna have all those calculations like you had with the Tegra X1 and what it could do, which Nintendo did downclock a little bit as well for battery life and everything, but this one's gonna be a lot better when it comes to the custom calculations and what they do with it. I feel that Nintendo's gonna go in with this because now they know that this hybrid is the future. They know that this hybrid is what is going to work and they don't have to worry about a home console and a portable and looking at the power and what they're going to do this and that they have both of them down in one and people are going to buy it the concept the gimmick of what it is sells itself so i see nintendo spending a lot of time and money and effort on what they're going to do and i think that they're even going to make it more of a hybrid than what they did before because if you look at it guys that dock that nintendo put out the new dock for the Nintendo Switch OLED, that can be updated. That can have some stuff done to it. So I feel that they're gonna tinker around with that dock. And what I mean by more of a hybrid is that when you actually 
put that switch into the dock, there could be some functions and there could be some things that actually enhance that's not intrinsically built into the switch itself. So for example, when you dock the regular Nintendo Switch, it actually functions a bit differently. Obviously it has access to a bit more to where it can have the higher resolution with the TV and all of that. And when it's off of the dock, it actually functions a bit differently so it can save some battery life and all of that. So I think that they're gonna put a supplemental computing device potentially into that dock or to where you can upgrade it and have that extra power, a DLSS or something in order to enhance the look of the Nintendo Switch games. I don't think it's gonna be anything too crazy or anything like that, but I would expect maybe even to have some memory built into that dock itself and maybe be able to store some games on there in addition to be able to have those games on your Nintendo Switch and maybe even stream them via cloud from your dock to the Nintendo Switch. So if you're somewhere and you don't have enough space in the internal memory, while well, your dock has that game and it can be streamed from the internet, maybe it's not as good, but at least you can have that. So these are the type of technologies that I think that Nintendo is already working on for the next Nintendo Switch and we could see employed with this. So I'm very excited to see that. I've talked about this before on the channel and I had you guys vote as well. And I said that, hey, maybe I'll talk about it in a video. And a lot of you guys feel that it's going to be a 2024 system. And that's kind of how I feel too. I think that 2022 is set, 2023, they announce it, and then 2024, it drops. So I think that they might employ the same exact strategy as they did the last time. I mean, if it worked before, do it again. So 2023, you announce it at the end of the year, then early 2024, it launches away from all the big games, away from all the Call of Duties, away from all the other whatever nonsense is coming out or any other stuff, and you just get it in its own launch period, launch month, and everyone's excited for it, just like they were excited for The Legend of Zelda. And of course, you build up your library towards that. That $1 billion investment, all right, you get that going. You get that ready to go with the new games. Obviously, you have the backwards compatibility to where you can play those older Nintendo Switch games and get them on there so people have an instant library. Or if they missed out on the Nintendo Switch library, well, now you have a bunch of games to play i think that's going to be one of the key things and nintendo's not going to mess that up especially with the successful system they usually make it to where you can do backwards compatibility so i fully expect nintendo to take advantage of that because why would they not I expect them to have some cross-gen titles, have stuff to where you can play on the Switch and also the Switch 2. So I think it's going to be pretty impressive what they're doing here. And I think that Nintendo is going to gear up for something pretty awesome. We get this last year of really big full support. 2023 comes about. We get some good games here and there. Nothing too crazy. Then 2024 geared up beginning of the year. That's when we're going to get that Nintendo Switch 2. So I think Nintendo is going to apply that same strategy that they applied for the Switch. But of course, make it even bigger and better now that you know you've got a hit on your hands. So so that's my thoughts on the next gen switch and of course we'll talk about it if we get any other rumors or more information i just kind of want to lay out some stuff that i've been thinking about when it comes to the next gen switch so what are your thoughts let me know in the comment section below all right and moving on to the final topic i wanted to discuss when we could see the next nintendo direct because there's a lot of buzz coming up on what nintendo is going to do nintendo has a bunch of games slated for this year and a lot of them in the first four months or so of the year so that leaves a lot for the rest of the year and rumors are swirling about Metroid Prime Remastered, about the official name for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Bayonetta 3, more information on that when that game is coming out, potential Fire Emblem, Xenoblade Chronicles, there's so much exciting stuff. So I was actually alerted that Nintendo has had a few years recently where they had Nintendo Directs in February. So could we see a Nintendo Direct drop this February for Nintendo Switch games? It's very possible based on the previous year. So February and March, Nintendo has also had Nintendo Directs at that point in March as well. So I can kind of feel Nintendo's going to be dropping the big bomb here when it comes to the Nintendo Direct and what they're going to be doing just based off of the lineup that we've seen so far. And of course, the surprises. What other games are going to be announced here? Because we know about some of them, right? Or at least the rumors about some of the games. But what else are they going to do? I think for me... Fire Emblem and Xenoblade. That's all I need to see announced this year. I think that Fire Emblem might be a little bit closer than Xenoblade based on the rumors so far, but what else could they announce? Could we get another legacy title? Nintendo's been pretty good with bringing back the Game Boy Advance type of line. We got a WarioWare. We also got Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Could they be bringing back Golden Sun? Is this finally the time? I think that there's so much stuff Nintendo can do at this next Nintendo Direct, and I think that they are gonna have some legacy stuff 
wind up at least a game or two. I mean, we still have E3 to talk about as well, which the normal E3 is canceled, but Nintendo always has their E3 Nintendo Direct. So I just think that a Nintendo Direct is going to be coming, and I feel that there's going to be some interesting announcements. And there's just been some buzz about what Nintendo's going to do this year. There's been rumors about not having many gaps because Nintendo is packing. The first four months of the year has four Nintendo Switch exclusives. I mean, if you count what Nintendo's actually helping out with or developing, there's four. If you count just other games that are exclusive, there's a lot more than that. With Pokemon Legends Arceus, we have that game coming out pretty soon here in January. Then also in March, there's Triangle Strategy. And then there's also Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Plus, there's Advance Wars 1 Plus 2, the reboot camp in April. So that is four games in four months. And then, of course, if you add on like the Chocobo GP and the Rune Factory and other exclusives that are coming to the system, there is a lot. So Nintendo's packing it all in the first quarter here. So what's coming next? Something tells me that there's a lot of games coming up because they wouldn't be doing that if there wasn't. So I'm excited to see what they have for us. And I think that there's going to be a nice Nintendo Direct, maybe February, but we'll have to wait and see. So what are your thoughts when it comes to everything that we discussed here? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, and click that notification bell to get my videos first. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.